This is Before It Was Headlines, It Was Prophecy, with your host, Katie Elizabeth. I'd like to welcome you today to hopefully the last time we'll be out of the studio. So let's get right to the heart of the matter here. You know, as the end of days continue to unfold, I don't think we realize how personal the conflict will become. Yeah, you know, I mentioned before the fact that, you know, I don't know when the Rider on the White Horse was released. But we're obviously facing situations in which our society seems to be willing, on every level, to just conquer each other. It seems to begin on every level. You know, the um, house, households are having terrible times, family problems, family crisis. Of course, religious households, you know, or houses of faith, whatever we want to call them, you know, every, there's just constantly a split and a divide from everything as important as doctrine of salvation to everything as insignificant as colored drapes and carpets in, you know, in addition. So you have all of those things. We also have the political factors. You know, this last week has been horribly um, unsettling in the racial division again, and to be really honest, our president fuels that fire every chance he gets, it seems. It just seems that that's an issue. You can watch the way the media promotes, you know, one situation and another one is just lost by the way. And, and that's a concern because it's like it truly is fueling that, you know, it seems that it is creating the need for someone to be right and someone to be recognized and there is an element of conquering in that that really disturbs all of us. It's very disturbing. The next situation I um, want to address here just very briefly is although the writers are moving across the earth, it does feel like there's a natural progression you know, because once we start the, um, you know, the conquering and disagreeing and all of that, then, of course, it goes to, you know, peace, which is the rider on the red horse. And, you know, Yeshua told his disciples in the fifth chapter, uh, pardon me, in the tenth chapter of Matthew, that ultimately the enemies of the followers would be in their own household. And we are seeing that. We're beginning to actually see that unfold on, once again, on every level of natural families, households of faith, countries dividing. I mean, we're seeing that on every level from spiritual matters to political matters to just tradition. You know, there's so little peace in multi-generational families already. And then we can look around and tell there's no peace, even amidst the religious groups that are using the same labels. There's been some real interesting videos as of late, you know, warning of the coming division and warning against the uprising to begin with and all of these things. And I'm just going to say, I truly believe that every generation has had the opportunity to sit here and say, ooh, this is what we're missing. And rather than get filled with ourselves, full of ourselves and our pride and say, I found, I found what everybody else is meaning, we don't share that in a way that it can be received because, well, as I said, we get self in the way. And I do believe that, you know, to get, I believe there's been a great falling away every generation of something. And we're coming into this time, and I feel very blessed to be coming into a time of, we need the whole Bible, no part of, you know, the Bible doesn't render a part of itself obsolete. We need to, there are two things, two things that we need to get a hold of concerning Scripture. One, that God would never, you'd have a hey, would never flood the earth again, the entire earth. So that's a promise we have from him. And the other is Yeshua said it is finished, and we're told in Hebrews that his blood is perfect, and the blood of bulls and rams was not. Other than that, nothing has been changed, redefined. We still have a high priest, Yeshua, Hamashiach. We still have instructions, Torah. 
we still have the written example in the accounts of the gospel of what it is to actually live Torah perfectly, which is the life of Yeshua recorded. And then we have in the book of Acts, the acts of the Holy Spirit through believers. So the fact that we wanted to take all of this and just debate it has only served to rob us of peace rather than getting a hold of the Prince of Peace and receiving the Shalom of Yudheva Hey in our lives. We're getting caught up in all this too. And it's really, we've got to stop because it's not being a good witness and it's robbing us of what we've been promised. Now, the next thing, the rider on the black horse is also, you know, that's, we're, we're seeing the personal cost of living. You know, things are getting expensive. You know, I've talked to my friend at the bank who, you know, they, they put together um, bags for the children to take home on the weekend because the parents are busy at the casinos. And, you know, I've actually witnessed situations in which the parents will put their own wants ahead of the children's needs. And that is happening. That's happening in our country right now. You know, we read about these horrible things, you know, where there's like a drought or a pestilence or something, and or a plague, and parents have to choose whether they're going to take a sick child that may not make it versus, you know, we, we see that in other countries and watch that. And we're not talking about that here. We're just talking about simple facts of greed, selfish greed ahead of need. You know, there is no reason for a child to be going hungry when a parent is at a casino. There's no, ch there's no reason for children to be unsafe when parents are, you know, spending their leisure time the way they want. There, those are issues that are coming to pass in our country, in America, by choice. Those are choices. Because, as Paul warned, people in the last days would become lovers of self. There are also, and you know, in the news, there's all sorts of examples of giving up natural affection, which is, of course, going to, you know, already leading us into plagues and pestilence, which, that's our horse. And as our society becomes more self-focused, health will deteriorate as the cost of living increases. And, you know, I'm sad this, you know, I'm not picking on anyone here, and I mean no disrespect, but we've become so far removed from the um, responsibility of our own health care that we don't realize much of our country is irresponsible about our health because the cost of the health treatment and the health care doesn't actually come out of their pocket. Therefore, it's just one appointment after another and very little thought given to the long-term expense factor or the fact that Yudheva He, our creator, has given us instructions for health that for the most part, by and large, we all ignore through our healthy time. It's the lack of our own personal responsibility. Now, you know, most of Paul's teachings have been misinterpreted. Paul was never writing against Torah or teaching opposition to Torah. He was never teaching opposition. He was addressing specific problems for specific gatherings, as we can tell by the titles of his letters, to specific communities, specific regions. And he was giving warning of the great falling away that would be coming. Most of Paul's teachings, you know, really are addressing to be able to walk in victory, get into the Word. Read the Bible for yourself and see what it says. Don't take somebody else's word for it. Read it for yourself. The Word is in writing. And the Word came in the flesh, who is Yeshua Messiah. We, we seem to spiritually reinvent ourselves regularly. But what we're doing and we've got to get away from is the enemy, the adversary, gets so much attention and so much credit when the reality is itself. 
It's the works of the flesh. It's human nature. It's the love of money. It's all those different things that are of human origin, of self-love, that are truly underlying in most of the problems we are watching unfold. While we're running around giving some defeated foe the glory. And that we need to stop. If we are walking in the power of yud heh vah -Hey, we don't need to worry. Some de demon that was defeated at Calvary. And an empty tomb proclaimed the victory over, over any spiritual force that would come against the creator of the universe. So we need to quit using that as an excuse for our works of the flesh and for our self-love. That's the problem. The decisions I've made that end up stumbling me are ones I made of the flesh. I don't need to blame it was like Flip Wilson coined the phrase, the devil made me do it. Well, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. And I'm not seeing people walking in so much power that we can all be under attack all the time. The enemy is not omnipresent. we got to quit giving him all this credit. And it's taking it away. We're, we're actually getting caught up in our own knowledge and our own flesh, and we're missing the promises of yud heh vah -Hey, who says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says yud heh vah -Hey. Yeshua said we'd be witnesses unto him, and we'd be given the power. Paul wrote, it's the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. We have this power, and we're, we're not receiving it because it's our own flesh that's doing it in the way. And we've got to get a hold of this in these last days. We still have to remember the enemy truly was defeated. Now, we can have some works of the flesh, some social teachings and tradition that do get in the way. But that's still our, my decision, our, your decision. That's still self being exalted when you have a hey has a way for us to do that and has instructed us as to how to do that. Because Yeshua said our enemy would be of our own household. So think of all the social teachings and traditions that says this is how you do it, this is how you don't do it, that had to do with tradition and family values and all of that. Now look at it from that perspective and say, well, now I see the issue. It's a matter of loving oneself. It's a matter of saying we can't be wrong. I'm going to keep fixing it. No, we can't. We just have to stop and say we can't fix it. We have to stop and say, this work of the flesh has to stop. Yet hey, by hey is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, for not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And what we have to repent from is the real enemy of a relationship with you, Heba Hey, the self. We have to get away from making our own rules and justifications. We have to just get away from all that. Turning to you, Heba Hey, genuinely coming to him through the only way, who is Yeshua Messiah. This has been Before It Was Headlines, It Was Prophecy, with your host, Katie Elizabeth.